Hello there and welcome. It's a pleasure to have you for company on this edition of Amon Finance and World Report, your source for the latest happenings in the financial sector of the economy. My name is Arthur Apoedafe. On this edition of the program, we kickstart by joining Faith and our guests on the town hall as they X-ray insurance laws and the challenges of implementation in Nigeria. As usual, it's no hold back. Do listen. The insurance commission is limited. It's not a prosecuting agent. It is still the responsibility of the police. So we want to appeal that each time there's an infraction of a compulsory insurance, let the respective organization prosecute. On this episode also, we bring to you the highlights of the Vanguard Economic Discourse, which was held recently at the Civic Center here in Lagos. The theme was the ad fact to rescue the Nigerian economy. My key point here is that the macroeconomic framework will remain dicey until we remove the huge uncertainty and the uncertainty surrounding our exchange. Not also forgetting our industry icon segment. This and more on the lineup for today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy it as we bring you details shortly. Please stay with us. Welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the Insurance Industry Town Hall this week. My name is Faith Uwadi. On this edition of the Town Hall, we'll be looking at a very topical issue that's talking about insurance laws and challenges of implementation in Nigeria. Now, too many compulsory insurances backed by this law in Nigeria, but implementation has remained one of the major challenges. So we're asking, what are the constraints to the implementation of insurance laws in Nigeria? Whose responsibility is it to implement or enforce some of these laws? All these and more will form the basis of our discussion on this edition of the insurance industry town hall. In our usual manner, we've gathered an array of well-tested professionals to do justice to the topic of discourse. In no particular order, I'm going to start as to join me on set Professor Chioma Agomo, who is a professor of law, University of Lagos. She is the first female dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Lagos from 2004 to 2008. Professor Agomo also is an author of Modern Nigerian Law of Insurance and she has also served on various committees relating to insurance matters. Thank you so very much, Pro, for joining me on the program. I'd also like to invite to join me on site Mr. Tunde Oguntade, who is Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of Lansing Insurance Brokers. Mr. Oguntade is a former chairman of the Lagos Area Committee of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. He's also the Vice Chairman of the M. CPD of the NCRIB. Thank you so very much Thank you. for joining us on the program. Last but not least, I'd like to invite Mr. Sonny Adeda, the past president of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIN. He's also the former executive director 
uh, technical of one of the foremost insurance company in Nigeria that's talking about Nikon Insurance, where he joined in 1980 as a graduate training. He's today the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Alpha Choice Insurance Brokers. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining much. me on the program. Uh, once again, thank you, uh, gentlemen and lady. <laughs> because you are not in my profession. If you are a journalist, there are no ladies. It's all gentlemen. <laughs> in law to this. There are ladies now. Okay. So welcome, gentlemen and lady. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Now, let me start by asking the existing insurance laws, Prof. Are they still relevant to modern day insurance business? Yes and no. They are still relevant because you need laws. But in terms of the contents and the modalities, they need to be re revised to make them to be in tune with modern way of doing business of insurance to capture the essence of it for effective uh, regulation and control. Okay. Um, Mr. Deda, would you say that maybe part of the reason why implementation has always been a challenge is because some of these laws are not so relevant to um, the modern day insurance business. Yeah, actually they are relevant any day because if you go back to some of the compulsory insurances, the whole idea is trying to protect the innocent public per individual. Take for example the origin of motor insurance. People buy cars on hire purchase, they drive this car, knock down an innocent man on the road, which can happen today, tomorrow, and any other day. So the law is still very relevant. But the issue we we'll try to look at now is the implementation. All laws are relevant, but how do you implement? How do you get the ordinary man who has bought a car to comply with the law? That becomes a two-angle directional issue. The law enforcement agents have a responsibility to implement most of these laws. So in actual fact, we need to plead with the law enforcement agencies to implement most of these laws and also the, 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 those who suffer one form of damage or the other to also try and claim their rights. Then in that way, these laws will become effective. Okay, now, um, I'll come back to Prof. I do know that um, you were part of that review committee of the insurance law. Some of these laws have been reviewed over time. But uh, mechanism for implementation has always been a challenge. Now, um, what do you see as some of the constraints to the implementation of insurance law? But before you answer, I'd like to, to have Mr. Ugunta's opinion on that. Well, um, like my elder said, laws are relevant at all times. Implementation has always been the bane of laws, generally. And in insurance, because of people's aversion for insurance, you find that even where the laws are in place, people don't observe them. And those who are supposed to implement the laws are the law enforcement agents. For instance, let me tell you about the, in the Insurance Act 2003, there's this provision uh, under the fire service insurance thing, there should be a pool of funds where every insurer contributes. contributes. And that fund is supposed to be for everybody who is into firefighting, not just the fire service in Nigeria. Everybody was into firefighting. But you find out that that provision has not seen the light, the light of the day. That is one. Then you also find out that the, 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 the aversion for insurance created by lack of deterrent where people break the law has not really helped implementation. I'll give you, there's a, when you go to some of these um, garages, there's what they call police make I pass. Services of insurance or motor that uh, Mr. Leader was <laughs> talking to about. People go to get them. Police through the NIA can use the NIDD system, NIID system to verify. But they still they choose to look the other way. Who chose to? Would you say is the police or the N NIA 
that has failed in their responsibility to push for the police to actually use some of these gadgets? The gadgets were donated to the police. Police are, they have sufficient information on how to use them. And they also, the NIDD thing is something that you can even do on your phone. Just go www, ask NIDD. You will know who these insurances these and it even gives you the details of the person. But those who are enforcing are not enforcing. And the bottom line that we have seen, even from conferences, is that they feel that they do not have a stake in insurance premium. Then you now ask them, okay, you want to take part of insurance premium because of the unfortunate fire uh, levy that they don't get at the fire service. Thing. The police would rather collect settlement from an early motorist than to save life by ensuring that if this man knocks somebody down, that man can get a uh, reprieve or he gets compensation. And in cases where people even get, uh, when they, we have victims are supposed to even go to police station or go after whoever has wronged them, you find that people will tell them that this man is your neighbor, why don't you let him go? But that is not the purpose of why the other guy has taken insurance. If I damage your car, you're my friend, you have a right of claim, to claim damages against me. Not me, but my insurer. People must be told that, see, if Mr. Adida's driver eats my car, and I now say I'm claiming from his insurance, I'm not claiming from Mr. Adida. I'm claiming because he has taken that effort to protect me as another road user. Not as if I'm taking from him and uh, I'm trying to you put our, are, you guys our are friendship into, into, <laughs> into, into, into <laughs> Okay, it. Prof, let me come back to you. I, I said I was going to come back. What do you see uh, as some of the constraints to the implementation of insurance laws in Nigeria? You know, I, I think that the problem of insurance industry of, of implementation is not peculiar as such it's more structural. What do I mean by that? The issue of a legal framework. First of all, the insurance industry is said to be one of the most overregulated financial institutions. It is, in quote, overregulated because of its nature. It's an industry that is based on trust. So at the beginning, there is nothing to show, but you take from others. And with the promise that when the time comes, okay. you will pay. But what do you find in practice? That oftentimes, the insurance industries don't meet the obligation. At the time of claim. At the time of claim. So they go by all sorts of names, but that's in time past because there's been a lot of improvement. There's a lot of improvement. But I think that the fundamental issue is who regulates who you know uh, NICOM is in charge is the regulatory body for insurance for insurance industry NICOM is a creature of statute the NICOM Act of 1997 when you look at the setup of NICOM and you look at the mode of funding and operations because part of one of my uh, younger colleagues who has supervised his PhD project, he carried it out on micro, the legal framework for micro, micro in, in insurance, insurance, okay, about two years ago he submitted. And he's been developing this theory, talk of, that those you are regulating are the ones who are financing you. And that there's a weakness in that. Okay. That, that weakness is that if the sources of funding for the regulator come from those that you are supposed to regulate, then there will be less, the, the, the regulation will not be as strict as it should be. be. Do you agree? No, no, no. no. I, 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 I don't agree. I don't agree with it. I don't agree fully with it, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the first time I read the paper, it was like, I beg your pardon, what are you talking <laughs> about? It may be, 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 it may be happening outside, but that I don't think that that's what's happening here. here. But just borrowing a leaf from that, I think the problem of the insurance industry regulation comes from within the industry itself. When we're talking of uh, insurance is based on trust, uh, people pay so that you can cover them for risks that they are not in a position to be able to cover themselves. And you'll find that when there is time to settle them, whether it's for motor 
whether it's for property, fire. whether it's for fire, you'll find sometimes it's under insurance because the industry undercuts itself. No. Uh, well, let, <laughs> let, let, let me quickly come into it. There are two angles. One, every regulator is supported by those he regulates. Take, for example, every transaction through a stockbroker, the Security and Exchange Commission gets a proportion comes to the, that organization. It's a way of collaborative uh, activities. Therefore, in insurance, to enable the regulator to do enough. It's not only a matter of uh, they also get involved in development of the market, education, and so many other areas they get involved into. The truth of it is that the market itself has actually gone two steps ahead from where we are coming from. Now, many claims have been settled. What we want to encourage claimants to do is to file genuine claims. If you have a genuine claim, the law says 90 days. So within 90 days, whether your claim is genuine or not genuine, there should be a proper, at least a response from the insurance company. So what we want to appeal to the insuring public is to please take pains, read what your policy provides for you, and when the event comes, because you actually feel the insurance, at the point of a loss. So we want to encourage people to file in genuine claims and watch what the insurance industry will do for them. Let's go back to the composite insurances. In recent times, there have been so many house collapse. Houses have collapsed. Poor artisans have died at the work sites. Nobody has compensated their families. And even the owners okay, of these uh, buildings, nobody you. has been prosecuted. I was going to nobody that has been prosecuted jail, the law is there. for not taking up insurance of a building under construction. construction. People have died, no compensation. Even the owner of the building uh -huh. is moving around the streets without any form of prosecution. So it is the responsibility of the government, which we believe, to prosecute. The insurance commission is limited. It's not a prosecuting agent. It is still the responsibility of the police. So we want to appeal that each time there's an infraction of a compulsory insurance, let the respective organization prosecute. Welcome back. Moving on, we now bring you highlights of the Vanguard economic discourse that was held recently at the Civic Center in Victoria Island. The theme was the hard facts to rescue the Nigerian economy. Keynote speaker was Professor Charles Soludo, former Central Bank Governor. Speaking during his presentation, Professor Soludo said Nigeria will no doubt get out of the current recession, but it will take a miracle for the government to return the GDP to the level it was in dollar time. Nigeria's premier business and financial daily, Vanguard, recently put together its 2017 economic discourse at the Civic Center, Victoria Island. The theme was the hard facts to rescue the Nigerian economy. The annual Vanguard Economic Discourse is a platform that brings economists, policymakers, and the business community together to discuss critical issues affecting the Nigerian economy. The keynote speaker this year was Professor Charles Solido, former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, while the chairman of session and moderator was Mr. Fola Adiola, founding GMD and CEO of Guarantee Trust Bank. Welcoming participants to the discourse, Mr. Benga Adefaye, GM and Editor-in-Chief, Vanguard Newspapers, said that the platform is meant to enrich the debate around the economy and assist the government to quickly achieve a turnaround from the current economic recession for the benefit of the people. We are concerned about the prosperity and well-being of our people and their businesses. Our modest offerings here, providing the platform it's meant to enrich the debate around our economy and assist the government to quickly achieve a turnaround 
of the distressed economy and make our life better. We think that the current situation can be improved upon. We think that all hands must be on the desk. For us, it is about the bottom up process towards achieving a better life for the people. It is a call to duty for us at the Vanguard as one of the surviving legacy newspapers in Nigeria. By the way, publishing business is always tough here. And it has been particularly made tougher by the current economic situation. Delivering the keynote, the speaker, Professor Solido, said that every government since the 1970s have lamented the lack of diversification of the economy, but none have been able to fix it. Every government, except those that have been forced by external agencies such as the World Bank and IMF to undertake painful adjustments, have always skated around the margins when faced with negative shocks and passed on the hard decisions to the next government. Every government since the 1970s has lamented the lack of diversification of export and fiscal revenues, but there has been no coherent strategy for a post-oil economy. Every government also blames previous ones for, quote, doing nothing, end of quote, and promises to be the, the one that will, quote, for the first time in Nigeria's history, get the job done and the cycle continues. Everyone is going to be the first one and the only one that will get it done. But nobody has got it done. We will be saying the same thing. I've read through the National Development Plans, 1970s and so on, until date. Every plan starts with that premise. The other ones did nothing. We're now going to be the ones to fix it. The high-level panelists at this course this year were Dr. Obadiah Mailafia, former Deputy Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Muda Isu, Director General, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mr. Isa Aremo, NEC Member, NLC and General Secretary, National Union of Textile Garment Workers of Nigeria. Mr. Alex Oti, Former Group Managing Director, Diamond Bank. Dr. Kayode Fayemi, Honorable Minister of Solid Minerals Development. Mr. Bismarck Rowani, MD Financial Derivatives Company Limited. And Comrade Adams Oshomale, Former Governor of Edo State. In his submission during the panel discussion, Mr. Oti said that Nigeria cannot afford the current presidential system of government. I don't agree that we need the kind of presidential system that we are running today. We cannot afford it. We can't afford a presidency with a president, vice president, all the special assistants, senior special assistants, advisors, assistants to special assistants, and all that. We cannot afford 109 senators. And with due respect, most of them doing absolutely nothing. A friend of mine who moved from the private sector to the Senate shared with me that he had never seen such an idle moment in his life. <laughs> he says he's, he works on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, three days in a week. They don't sit on Friday, they don't sit on Mondays. We can't afford 360 House of Representative members. We can't afford 36 governors and 36 deputy governors, all of them taking fast security votes. I'm aware that some states, some state governors collect over 1 billion naira per month as security vote. And nobody asks questions. What are they doing? Are they fighting a war? Also sharing his thoughts during the panel discussion, Mr. Shomale affirmed that we cannot have a truly diversified economy with interest rates at 15 to 20 percent. What is the microeconomic objective of the CBA monetary policy? Because like the man representing the private sector said, if you look at your submissions, some of which we help you to parrot by the private sector, but how do you diversify the economy, deepen the role of the private sector, encourage investment by pricing money out of the reach of investors. I asked Professor Soludo, because as you see today, so it was for that extent, that 
the CPN was borrowing at uh, 12%, 30%, 40%. And I said to you on that occasion, I said, even if you were dealing on cocaine, you will find that those who buy from Colombia, they might get it more cheaper than if you want to do it from Nigeria. So these contradictions have always been there. The 2017 Vanguard Economic Discourse was a huge success given the high level of the speakers and panelists. The consensus at the end of the discourse is that to rescue the Nigerian economy from the current recession, all hands must be on deck. But most significantly, the government and the policy makers must lead by example. Alright, that's our time on the program this week. I do hope you have enjoyed every moment spent with us. Join us again next week for a fresh package. In the meantime, feel free to reach us on all our social media platforms. Do remember that this program airs also on BCOS Ibadan every Thursday by 6 p.m. Until next time, I'm Arthur Apoedafi. Bye bye. Listen up as Faith Awarde brings you our Pidgin English program, Waiting Insurance Day Do Set, with different guests every week. Airing live on Niger FM 102.7 at 9.45 a.m. every Wednesday.